Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I want to share my experience with the online educational resources commons.org. It was a really cool website. And I'm going to focus on stoichiometry resources for chemistry teachers. Stoichiometry is its own unit in chemistry and also in AP chemistry. It happens to be a very important unit. Most chemists use it all the time. And whenever you are making something in your kitchen, and you're using a recipe, you are using stoichiometry and you didn't even know it. So let's look at some of the resources that I have discovered. One of my favorite things that I've discovered from the OER is the amount of free textbooks that are on there. And each one of them have a stoichiometry unit on it. So I'm going to go through these resources with you. Um, next year, if we happen to have virtual school, these are wonderful tools that you can provide for all of your virtual students who are learning at home because these textbooks are free and they have examples of problems worked out hardcore in each one of these resources. So let's start off with introductory chemistry. This was a resource provided by a gentleman known as David W. Ball from Cleveland State University. Um, and it's basically a college chemistry textbook um, which half of it would be perfect for a regular 11th grade chemistry class. So here is what it looks like. And it only got two stars. Uh, no one provided a reason as to why it had two stars, but um, I'm going to start with this textbook. Um, it covers all of the things that I would cover normally in a chemistry classroom or would also review in an AP chem chemistry classroom. So chapter four deals with chemical reactions and equations. So we'll start here with the chemical equation. And um, it basically just reads like a textbook where it highlights all the definitions. It provides examples of chemical reactions and it starts them off with the experience of stoichiometry by having them balance chemical equations. Um, it even provides all the answers for some of their examples and you can just scroll through it like a textbook just like all of our online textbooks that we have. Um, it goes over the five types of chemical reactions like single replacement, double replacement, and all of those types of different reactions. Um, it even includes the activity series. So I really liked this one because it's very easy to follow. And as I said, it has all of the chapters that you would expect from a chemistry classroom. I really like this chemistry textbook through OpenStax. This one was a really good resource. And by the way, all of these resources are going to hit all of your learning standards, whether it's the new generation of science standards, um, I'm sorry, the next generation of science standards, or even the Arkansas standards for chemistry. Now, if uh, through OpenStax, you have access to this free textbook, you can either download the whole PDF and keep it with you forever. You can even print it out for your kids if you are lucky like I am and you have no quota on your copying. <laughs> um, otherwise, you can just view this textbook online. I really like this one because the examples and the real world applications that they have embedded in it are amazing. So, um, for instance, if we go to chapter four, Stoichiometry of Chemical Reactions, um, it opens with writing and balancing chemical equations. Very detailed, gives lots of visual representations um, and models of what a chemical reaction looks like. And um, even provides learning objectives, or what we were going to call instructional objectives. And it starts off with giving you very, very detailed ways of balancing a chemical equation. I've discovered that my students can either do this or they can't. And I tell my students there's no um, set method for balancing chemical equations, but this one provides a nice, wonderful table that the students can use to balance chemical equations and it shows everything mathematically. Um, one of the things that I really liked about this one is right here, a link to learning. Here is an interactive a tutorial and when I first uh, found this and I clicked on it, it sent me to a pet interactive simulator. 
We love these in the science field. These are wonderful. You can design all types of lessons from these pet simulators. <clears throat> so this one um, gives you the option of just, the kids can practice three types of equations. They can change these numbers. This is the hover process. This is important for the creation of ammonia, which can either be used to make fertilizer or, as the Germans used it in World War I, explosions. Germans were best at chemistry. Um, the kids can practice all of their balancing through these wonderful games. And so I thought that this was really wonderful that this textbook included that. Right now, um, I'm about to give my kids a quiz over net ionic equations. It's a, it's a really hard concept that kids have to master in AP chemistry. And so um, usually at the end of the year, I start to teach my regular chemistry kids some of the stuff that they'll see in AP chemistry. So that way I can give them good prior knowledge to speed things up in the world of AP chemistry. So I was really excited when I saw how detail oriented all of this was. And um, it provides examples. And what I really like is, in addition to net ionic equations, it gives them the solubility rules, which is something we're also going to cover in this unit. Um, I show the kids the solubility rules a little bit differently. So um, my method matches theirs. So I really appreciate this and enjoy this very, very much. Um, so the next textbook that we'll look at is called Boundless Chemistry. <clears throat> and again, this one looks like a college textbook or a community college textbook, which is just perfect for a 11th grade chemistry class or actually even an AP chemistry class. We just go further in depth in the AP chemistry class. Um, we have a download quiz files, download for offline use. So this one, let's just click on this download quiz files because actually I didn't notice that last time. Um, so we click on this. All right, actually there was nothing really important about that, but I will have to play with that for later because uh, basically it gives you a way that you can create question banks. Um, so, under Boundless Chemistry, this textbook, I'm going to go to, where was it? Okay, Reaction Stoichiometry. Now, what I like about this one is we have all of our learning objectives in gray, and then there are key takeaways, key points that the kids really need to master before they move on. And of course, just like any textbook, it gives lots of detailed information over balancing chemical equations. And what's really cool about this resource is there are embedded videos, okay? And this is the method of, as to how I teach chemistry, I'm sorry, stoichiometry in class with the kids. And so this train track method is very popular in the world of chemistry. And so I teach them that way. And um, so I'm grateful that, um, it has in videos embedded in it. You can even find Tyler DeWitt videos. General chemistry here is just basically a wikis type spaces. I'm sorry, it's a wiki source. So it kind of looks like wiki, uh, Wikipedia. That's the word. That's the word I'm looking for. So, <clears throat> but it's all pretty much outlined exactly like a textbook. And so here's your stoichiometry unit where you're uh, balancing chemical equations, identifying limiting reactants and percent yield, and the types of chemical reactions, all things that you would normally see in a stoichiometry unit. Now, this last one is for my own personal use, and I think that teachers need to, um, you know, we have to do about 40 hours of PD. My school district makes us do 60 hours of PD every year. And so I wish that reading a textbook like this would count, but it probably won't. But I included this source because physical chemistry was an evil, evil course in college. And so I might want to review it. So the OER provides a physical chemistry one textbook, basically. Um, if I, as a teacher, wanted to really, really further my knowledge of thermodynamics, 
I could utilize this resource and just have a wonderful time with it. Um, <clears throat> so here's what it looks like. It's basically a, a huge PDF. Um, one second. So as you can see, this website, <clears throat> I'm sorry, this source has nothing but really, really cool stuff. Like we have a whole chapter over the first law of thermodynamics and then the second one. And um, then we have all these wonderful equilibrium conditions and multi-component systems. Very, very complex for high school chemistry, but even college students who are in their senior year taking physical chemistry one would really benefit from something like this. And even um, professors who are like, don't even bother buying the book, just go to this free resource. They could give their kids that opportunity. So these free textbooks all align with the standards that you can find in the NGSS standards and even the Arkansas state standards. So I provided a link for chemistry integrated standards for, in the state of Arkansas. And um, I'm going to focus a little bit on topic one, matter and chemical reactions. So let's look at that. Actually, I have an open window right here. So topic one, these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight standards for that one topic. Then down here are all the science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. These science and engineering practices can be found in all of the sciences in the NGSS standards. Same thing with the disciplinary core standards and the cross-cutting uh, concepts. Patterns, energy and matter, stability and change, structure and function. These are all things that you can find from science to science. These are the science practices that the ACT will be testing. And so I really want to make sure that I hit these standards with whatever I cover in chemistry. So going back to our presentation, um, here are two of the very, very broad standards. Let me uh, just close this out of the way. Get that out of the way. Now, use mathematical representations to support the claim that atoms and therefore mass are conserved during a chemical reaction. This is fully addressed in the chemistry integrated course, which is an 11th grade course. The emphasis is on assessing students' use of mathematical thinking in stoichiometry using the mole concept. The next standard uh, talks about design a solution to a complex real world problem by breaking it down into smaller, more manageable problems that can be solved through engineering. So we're going to look at some, um, uh, a lot of this stuff is very, very broad. We're going to look at the impact of heavy metals or phosphate pollutants on the environment, but we'll even look at the hydrogen fuel cell through this oxygen, hydrogen oxygen reaction. So when I, uh, some of the sources that I found on the OER, the first one was Introduction to Balanced Chemical Equations. Let me bring this back up. <clears throat> oh, goodness. All right. This wonderful human being right here created this web, this source, and I have no idea what their name is, and I feel bad that I don't know their name. But this little module right here is really, really cool because in terms of the flow of instruction and assessments, it has pre-assessment, it has formative assessment, it has summative assessment in it. It even has the teacher's point of view, which I really appreciate, appreciate as we go through this. So basically the students can go through these 10 pages and there are assessments in them. Here is a link right here for a common periodic table of elements with common polyatomic ions. Very useful because I try to tell the kids, you know, you need to, I'm sorry, I tell the kids, I don't try. I tell the kids they need to try to memorize their common polyatomic ions. And uh, of course they're just like, sure, yeah, we're going to do that. But this wonderful resource right here is basically a Google Sheet, and it provides the most up-to-date current periodic table of elements. And uh, what I like about it is it has all of the atomic orbitals on it. And then down here, it has the common polyatomic ions. I apologize, this has been a little slow. But there we have it. 
uh, try to get your students to memorize those, they'll be like, yeah, whatever. Um, I actually have about 90% of those memorized. Some of them like orthosilicate, I'd be like, I don't think I need to ever know that one. <laughs> but anyways, so what I like about this module is the pre-assessment and the I can statements. Um, if the kids want to make sure that they are going to master this, they need to make sure that they master all of these I can statements. Okay, now um, we start off with the discussion of chemical formulas. And one thing that I like about this, this is really cool right here, is these quiz moves. Before you can get into a deep, dark discussion of chemical equations, and especially predicting the products of chemical equations, you, the students need to have mastered chemical nomenclature, which is the art of naming chemicals. So these quiz me's are really cool because it'd be like magnesium fluoride. Give me the answer. Bam, there it is. Check the answer. Yay, I got it right. Well, if you did terrible on those quiz me's, here are a whole bunch of links that are going to send you back to those lessons. So those are wonderful. And so if I go to page 10 here, here are some final thoughts, some final balance, the chemical equations. So really cool stuff. And it's got a nice, wonderful sense of humor behind it. All right. Chemical reactions and stoichiometry. This one, oops, go back. This one right here <clears throat> is through the Concord Consortium. And by the way, one thing, I'm going to go back to that real quick. <laughs> one of the things that's really cool about the OER, sometimes you get this over here on the side where it aligns this specific activity towards the next generation of science standards and even some other state standards like Wyoming here is included and um, so far that's the only one that's on here other than the NGSS standards. Okay, so what I like about this one is if I, I would use this one for AP chemistry, mainly because it's a little higher ordered and it includes some major learning objectives that the kids have to master in chemical kinetics. Um, of course, down here again, it repeats all of those standards it even links this to the disciplinary core ideas, such as chemical reactions and the science and engineering practices. OK, so looking at a preview of this, this is like a miniature module, which you can assign to the students through a link. And then they sign in, include their information, then they submit it to you and it grades it automatically. So it's wonderful. Um, here are the pages in this activity. And in terms of stoichiometry, it provides a little module over limiting reactions, which is really cool. But when you begin the activity, um, there's a lot of these simulations in here. And it relates to my AP chemistry students. You've learned about chemical reactions in 11th grade, but do you really understand on a molecular level what a chemical reaction is? A chemical reaction is when a bond is broken and a new bond is formed. And it all happens by pure coincidence and pure chance. The collisions between these single atoms will form this molecule. And its rate, chemical rates, are based on, you know, how easy it is to break that bond or how easy it is to form that bond. And temperature will come into play big time. And so you answer these questions, it records them, and then the kids can look at these simulations. Let's look at one here in a second. So let me load one up. All right, in this simulation, the goal is to get these two green dots to form a single bond. So I'm gonna add two atoms and we're gonna hit play. And unfortunately, those two atoms were close together. So I'm gonna go back. Sometimes, if you'll notice here, they'll put them in random places. I want them to be as far apart as possible. So now they're just going to bounce around. And if they get close enough and collide, they join together. Now watch what happens if we add a whole bunch of atoms. 
since there are more of them about, they collide faster, the reaction rates pretty fast. And so in AP chemistry, when we talk about chemical reactions, um, the more concentrated your reactant molecules are, the more fast the products are formed. And the less amount of reactant molecules that you have, the slower those products will form due to collision theory. So this module is really cool about that. There's all kinds of cool stuff in this one. And what I like is it grades it automatically. And you know, in the world of teaching, sometimes you need something to be graded fast, but also something like this that's very interactive and the students can enjoy and come back to over and over again. So um, the that that one was really cool. So there, uh, the, this hydrogen oxygen lab was really cool. The OER has lots of lab resources, experiments mapped out for you. This website, Teach Engineering STEM Curriculum K-12, through is a wonderful resource for all science teachers. Um, it gives you the learning objectives for labs. It gives you all of the documents that you need to do this lab, and it gives um, validity to these labs. Why would you be interested in this hydrogen oxygen reaction lab? For the kids, it is we're interested in the hydrogen fuel cell. Um, these hydrogen fuel cell rockets run on just hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and the exhaust is not a pollutant. It's just basically water. And you can produce hydrogen very easily through the decomposition of water. And oxygen gas is quite plentiful in the air. 20% of the atmosphere is oxygen gas. So it's plentiful. So this resource has everything that you would need. If you planned in advance, you could buy all the chemicals that you needed. Um, I looked at this and said, a hydrogen generator, generator, what the heck is that? And basically, it's just something I've done before where you add magnesium to acid and you produce hydrogen gas. So it was really cool. But these three activities hit both of these standards. Um, one other thing that I want to, to cover and close is some of the other cool stuff that I had found on the OER. Um, and they all fit this objective right here, in which you want to plan and conduct an investigation of the properties of water and its effect on earth materials and surface pro processes. This is a very, very broad standard that, you know, you can fit some chemistry into this that you've been doing for years. For instance, one of the things that I would be looking at is precipitation reactions and how minerals are formed, such as calcium phosphate, calcium carbonate, how those minerals are formed through precipitation reactions. In order for you to do that, you have to understand the solubility and net ionic equations. So this one resource right here, over solubility and net ionic equations. Um, a female teacher has shared with us all of their lessons in which they introduce the solubility rules, then they show the kids how to handle the solubility rules. There are tricks for remembering the solubility rules, which I'm going to share with my kids because they were quite funny. And um, then it just gives you some MP4 videos that you can use in class to show kids how to do net ionic equations. OK, now here's a lab that's associated with net ionic equations called if you're not part of the solution, you are the precipitate. That's a running joke in chemistry. And um, I'm actually going to do this lab or a lab just like it with my kids tomorrow. So I'm excited about that. Hopefully they will enjoy it. But um, again, this Teach Engineering resource gives you all of these activities, these docx, these PDFs, gives you all of the alignments to the standards and everything that you would ever need. And um, I like it. Um, one of these teach engineering labs that I want to use with my AP chemistry kids employs the use of a microscope. And it's quite um, important that kids understand what kidney stone crystallization is. So I included the link of this activity from teach engineering because it involves stoichiometry. It involves net ionic equations and chemical reactions. And it's quite applicable. The kids learn about what kidney stones are, 
how they form in the body, how they're dangerous, and how they grow based on inhibitors or not. So um, I really am looking forward to this. I'll let you know how it works out um, if I ever see any of y'all in the future. But again, this gives all the worksheets, all the attachments, all the stuff that teachers need to do it. I might even try this rock candy, your body, exploring crystallization. Um, I've tried this before, making rock candy. It was quite messy, nasty, and uh, we had a hard time with it, but the kids enjoyed it. The kids enjoyed it. Um, this last resource involves an interactive acid-based titration. This is a lab that I enjoy doing with the kids because um, it involves stoichiometry. It involves um, HCl plus NaOH yields um, salt and water. Technically, I can I have a glass of concentrated acid here, and as long as I have the same concentration of the base, I can mix them together and drink it. I never do that. You know, some chemistry teachers have done that. Um, I'm not interested in drinking salt water or even possible contaminants. But this interactive acid-based titration is really, really cool. And um, this is what the burette looks like. And you put base in there, and then you drop it into a solution of acid. And when you get a color change, you're at the equivalence point. But this involves pH, and so kids can measure pH and look at pH graphs, which are very important for AP chemistry. All right, <clears throat> so let's look at this interactive real quick. Then we'll finish up. What I like about this is you can change the acid, okay? Um, in AP chemistry, the kids need to know the difference between a weak and a strong acids. Strong acids dissociate completely, whereas weak acids break apart, then get back together, break apart, then get back together. I always tell the kids, come on, y'all all are y'all all are equipped with knowing all the teenage dramas that are going on throughout the school. They broke up one week and they're back together. They broke up one week and they got back together. And then there's Taylor Swift. When she breaks up with them, she never, ever, ever gets back together with them. So that's a strong acid. So with the students, whenever we are doing, um, if I don't have time to actually set up the lab, then the kids can look at this titration and look at the titration curve as a function of adding base to an acid and then having a pH meter give you the pH. For a weak acid, we talk about how this is the buffer region, and we relate it to all of this wonderful, wonderful stoichiometry that we've been talking about, and the chemical reactions as well. Then we relate it to the henderson hasselbalch equation. Yay! And then by the time we're finished covering that, the kids are ready for the AP chemistry exam. So, this is all the information that I have got from the OER. Um, there's so much more that was on there. I teach biology and I teach physics. I wanted to do a whole lesson over free body diagrams, but I thought I would do one on chemistry because chemistry seems to be the hardest course out of the courses that I teach. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the year.